Hey everyone, I'm Deepak Shrivastav. Welcome to my channel. So as you know, in SharePoint, we can create a relationship between list and library using the lookup column that we already know. We always use that. But in SharePoint, we don't really have an easy way to provide the end users a single screen where they can see all of those related list library together to work more smart. Okay, so today's video is all about creating something that we can use to showcase all these related list and library in one single app and how we can provide end user an easy experience working with these related lists from SharePoint. So for, for the demo, uh, I have already created a use case or, or some list and library that I'm going to use. So in my SharePoint, what I have, I have this project list and this list is nothing but showing me different project or I'm using to track different projects that my team is working on. Then I have a work progress tracker list. You can think this is a task list for these different projects. So one project can have multiple tasks. So this list is nothing but tracking these individual tasks for each project. And what I did in this project, if you notice, we have I have this project reference column, okay? And if I go to the list setting, and if you look at this project reference column, it's a lookup column. And what this column is, simple lookup column, how we create in SharePoint list, name is project reference. Uh, then it is looking, getting information from this project list. That's the main project list that I've created. And it's trying to get information from title. The approach that I'm going to show you in, in next, uh, in this video, doesn't really depend on whether you are getting information from the title or you are getting from the from the ID column. OK, it's up to you how you are creating the relationship. However you create, we just going to make sure that we are using that particular column when we're going to create the app. OK, so in my case, I'm using title. And the reason I'm using title because I like my end user to also come to the SharePoint if they want to and see which project these tasks are belongs to. Then I have another document library. OK, same, uh, these documents uh, user can upload and each document can have a project associated with them. Very similar, I have the project reference column here. Again, it's also a lookup column looking up to the project list title. OK, so that's the setup. Now, if you notice here, everything is perfect in SharePoint. We have the list, we have the task list, and we have the document list. But somehow I have no capability or feature available where I can give a one view to the end user so that they can see the project, they can see all the tasks associated with that project, and they can see all the documents. So we generally don't have in SharePoint. And to get something like that, either we need to create an SPFX web part or the approach that we're going to talk today, Power Apps. So what I did, I created this Power App. As you can see here in this Power App, I am. this is my screen one. It is just showing me all the projects that we had in this list. From here, you can, of course, you can add all the functionality of creating a new project. When I'm going to click on any of these projects, it's going to take me to another screen. And this is where the magic is, right? Now you are on a screen in Power App that giving me all the information about the project that you can see on the top. The project team members, another column that we have in our project list. And then it is also displaying me all the tasks associated with this particular project and all the documents associated with this particular project. I can also click on task. Now I can create a new task under this project. And if you notice here, it is automatically selected. So now the app knows which project you are trying to create task and it's gonna automatically select it for you. Similarly, if I open any of the individual tasks, again, the same thing, I can change the information, but the project relationship is still there, it's selected. Same way, I can also have the document. I can click on the document. It will open the document in the next window. I can also upload or create a new document, OK? I am not going to cover that in this video, how you can upload the document. But if you like to see, I have another video on the document library. You can check it out. In that, that video, I have already covered how you can actually upload documents from Power App to the document library. So this is the app. That's what we're going to learn today. So without wasting any more minutes, let's jump onto the Power App. So I logged into make.powerapps.com and I'm going to create a blank app. You can give any name. Okay, so the app is ready. 
Now, generally what I do, the first thing that I try, I do, I create the data connection. Okay, so as we know, our data is coming from SharePoint. So I'm going to the data tab, search for SharePoint. Okay, and then I'm going to select the SharePoint. It's gonna ask me to create a new connection or if I have any connection already, I'm gonna select the connection that I already have. My site URL, and then I'm going to select all the different list library that I'm going to use in my app. So I have my work progress document, work progress tracker, and the project list. As you have seen, those are the three list and two list and one library I'm going to use in this app, click connect. Now we have all of our data connection ready. So the first thing that we need, the first screen that we need is just to show me all the project, okay? So for that, I'm going to insert a gallery here. So this gallery is going to target to my project list, okay? And then of course you can make changes to the, the styling, what all information you want it to show here. Right now I'm just showing the title and then maybe, okay, very simple. So this part is done. The second part that we need when I'm going to click on any of these project, I should be going to the other screen where I can show you that related list and library. So for that, I'm going to insert another screen. And before I go ahead and start adding uh, control onto the detail screen, another thing that you need to do, on select of this gallery, we are going to set a variable, okay? So what we are doing when I'm gonna click on any of these different project, I'm capturing that information into this variable, okay? And then I will use this variable into my other screens that I'm going to create, okay? So that's the only thing that you need to do here. Then we go to the next screen or the detail screen. Now in this screen, what you need? The first thing that you need to show the detail about the project. So for that, I'm going to insert another gallery here. And in the items, I'm going to say variable current item, okay? That's the only thing I need to do. And then I'll make some changes here. I'll say title and subtitle. And then if you look here, we have the title. So we just need to start showing these different information. Okay, I am using the project status, okay? Now, if you notice, when we drop the gallery and we set up to variable current item, nothing is displaying. The reason, because this variable is empty. So what we need to do, go to the screen one, okay? So here, what we need to do, we have set the variable, then we are going to navigate to our detail screen, and then you can just use whichever styling you want. Now let's play the app, click on one of these, and you see here, right? So I'm getting that project information that I've selected. Okay, so what I did, I just added these different labels here to show the different information. So like, for example, I have these small icons and I have these labels uh, showing the status, okay? So like this item dot project status dot value because this is the choice column, department, duration, start date and end date. This is what it's going to display here, as you can see. And then if you remember in my app, I was also displaying the, the project team. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna drop a label here calling project team. So this is just, I added one label here. And in the project team, if you look at my list, I have this column here. So it's a people and group column where I'm allowing multiple selection, okay? So for that, what I'm going to do, I'm gonna insert another gallery here, okay? and. In this gallery, the item I'm going to say this item dot project team. Okay. And we are going to move it here, resize it a little bit. And then I'm going to reduce the size of this image, realign that. And also, if I go to this uh, gallery here, we don't need the separator, we don't need the next arrow. I don't need subtitle and I want image to be on the top. Okay, so that's the only change I will do. And if I go to the text here or the, the title, if you click this item dot, you can have the display name. And we are going to change the font color to white so I can read the name. Okay, and then I'm going to resize it a little bit so it aligned together. 
okay and now we need to work on the image so for image what I'm going to do I'm gonna say I'm gonna connect to office 365 users okay so create a connection for that and here in the image I'm going to say office 365 user v2 this item dot email and this should bring the picture okay it's perfect so we have our project team listed here we have the project information now next we need the most important part that is our task okay so all the tasks related to this particular project so for that again we are going to insert another gallery here so insert a gallery okay and then I need to format it a little bit and the data source for this particular gallery is going to be my progress tracker or the list where you want to track the task or the list that is the dependent list for your parent list how you are creating the relationship okay so now if you notice I am getting all the item from the work progress tracker okay so what you need to do if you go to the item this is what we need to do we need to filter this list only for this given project so we will use filter okay filter this data source and what should be the logic you need to find out your lookup column that you are using so in my case my lookup column is project reference and if you select that column press dot each lookup column is going to give the ID and the value okay ID is going to be the ID of your item that you're looking up and the value is going to be the text or the the value actual value that is that displaying on the screen if you remember we have created lookup column based on the title so what I'm going to do I'm going to select the value and then I'm going to say if the project reference dot value equals to variable current item you remember this is the item this is the current item or the variable that we have selected when we are creating on our first screen to come to this screen so that is giving me the current item dot title the title is going to give me the name of the project this one so this filtering is going to filter the data coming in this task list only for this given project and as you can see here right now I am getting only for the development project so this is the step one this is how you can filter the data that is that is coming from those related list based on the filtering that you can apply on the value or on the ID then I'm going to add one header on top of this gallery here okay this is just the label okay and I added one icon that's gonna allow me to create new tasks so let's understand how you can create a new task and how you can access any of these task detail okay so for that I'm going to create another screen quickly here this is going to be my task detail screen okay on this screen I'm just going to insert a form because this screen I'm using to either view the task that I'm working on or create a new the data source for this is still going to be the work progress tracker or the task list now we need to make some changes here because we don't want all columns so once you add or add the data source you can go to the field click on edit field and any of the field that you don't want you can just select and delete so I'm going to delete some of the fields from here okay so I just selected the field that I need the key field is the project reference this is my lookup field as you can see the data type is complex now before we start moving forward and updating this form one more thing that we need to do we need to go back to the detail screen and let's work on the new item first and then we will work on the, the, the viewing the existing item so first thing that we need on select of this plus icon what I need to do I need to reset form and then select the form that you have created and you can see the name is form one so that's what I'm seeing form one if you rename this you need to use that particular name then I need to create another variable here so variable form mode this will tell me whether I am creating a new item or new task or I'm updating an existing one in this case I'm gonna say form mode dot new now because I'm creating a new item I still need to initiate the form as a new form so I will select the new form and then pass the name of the form so form one and then I will say navigate to my form screen 
Okay, so these are the few formulas that you need to use on the new. Let's play that, click on the plus icon, and now you are at the screen where you can create a new item. Okay, now a couple of things. You, you see at the project reference, let me play this. This is the lookup column, and as you can see here, it's allowing me to select the project for which I'm creating the task. When I'm working on the, the related list, because I'm already on the project for which I want to create the task, I don't want as a user, I don't want to select it, it should be auto select. So to auto select this particular item, what you need to do? So as you know, when you insert a form, it has these different data card. So select this particular data card for your lookup field, go to the advanced and click on this unlock. Okay, so you need to unlock it before you can make any changes to these data card. Okay, and once you do that, you see here saying default, click on the default under advanced, click on the default. So right now what is what it is saying that the default should be this item, whichever item you are trying to open here, dot project reference. When you're gonna create new, because there is no, this item, there's nothing at selected, it's gonna be empty. But if you're working on edit, it's gonna show you the whatever the item selected. So this is where we need to make changes and we need to use a formula here, okay? So this is the formula that you can use to default a particular uh, lookup column, okay? And as you can see here, this is where we are defining that what type of field this is. And then what you are passing, you're passing ID and the value. That's what required for the lookup column because lookup column is going to have an ID and the value. And what ID and value we are passing? variable current item. This is the variable that we have set up when we are on our first screen. So this is going to give us the current project ID and current project title. And as you can see here, it's now development. And if you just want to make it more uh, stable, what you can do, you can go to the display mode and instead of using whatever the parent display mode, I'm going to say display mode dot disable. So I don't want users to change it. They can view it, but they cannot change it. So now if you notice here, when I'm going to create a new item, the project that I'm working on is already selected. Okay. And then also I'm going to insert two button for saving this item and going back. So one button is to save and one button is to cancel. On cancel on select, the simple thing you can do just to use the back function. It's going to just re return you to the back screen. And on save button, what you need to do, you just need to submit this particular form. Okay, pretty straightforward. Now let's go back to our uh, detail screen. So we have we are done with the plus icon. Now the same thing what we need to do on select. So what I'm going to do, copy this, this all these all small formula that we have on the plus icon. And I'm going to go to this gallery on select. I'm going to paste, okay. The only thing that we are going to change, we are not creating a new form. As you know, the item is already there. We are just going to see the detail of that item. So instead of saying new form, I'm going to set a variable, variable current task to this item. Okay. And then I'll go back to this task detail and go to this form, go to the item property of this and say variable current task. Okay. Pretty simple. So now if I go back to my detail screen, if I play the app and if I click on any of these item, it's gonna auto populate that. Still, this thing is selected by default. Let me add another icon here so we can go back to our main screen or the project list screen. On select, I'm going to say back. Okay, so now if I go to my first screen, click on the training and planning project, as you can see here, and here I'm only seeing training and planning project task. If I go to any of the tasks, the default is selected and I have all the information. Plus I can also create a new item. I don't need to select the project reference. Okay, so this is the first part where you can actually easily create those, uh, those parent child relationship between the two lists. Same goes to our document library. Okay, so for the document library, what I'm going to do, I'm going to add the, the label here or the header here. So this is for the document. And then for the document, I'm going to insert another gallery. Of course, this is the vertical gallery. And this is going to target to my work progress documents. Okay, and here I'm going to say this item dot file name with extension. So it's going to give me the name of the file or the document. 
and the next item or the next field you can select whichever field you want to select okay i just selected the, uh, the modified perfect and here on the image i'm going to say this item dot thumbnail dot video okay so this will just show me the thumbnail but if you notice here this is also showing me all the item all the documents coming from the document library we need to filter and you know the the formula is pretty similar because we use the similar kind of lookup column i'm gonna say filter this data set where project reference that's the name of my column the lookup column value equals to variable current item that's the current project dot title awesome right so now i'm only seeing the document related to the training and project let's go to the home screen and let's play this app again and now let's go to the project and pupil you see the documents has changed so now i'm seeing the documents for project and pupil if you like to open this document into the separate window what you can do let me change this to okay and on select of this particular icon what you can use you can use a function called launch okay here you need to uh, pass the link which link you want to launch this item dot link to item and the next is going to be parameter we are not going to pass any parameter and then where you want to target so i'm gonna just say launch target dot new so it's going to open in the new window okay so this way you can open now one thing you might be noticing that if you want to add a document or upload a document and mm -hmm. associate that document to this particular project for that uh, i'm not going to cover that in this video but i have another video as i said at the beginning you can definitely go back and check out that video in that video i have talked about how you can upload a document to a document library using power app yeah so this is how simple and straightforward this concept is uh, you can create any number of parent child relationship in sharepoint and then you can use power app to actually display that in a very easy user friendly way to the end user yeah so let me know uh, if this is something helpful for you and if you have any question leave the comment thanks for watching thanks for listening and thank you for subscribing to my channel Keep listening, keep watching, keep subscribing. Thank you.